All right. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, folks, who are joining us online. We've got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Been uh, working on on this for some time, and excited about sharing it. We are on what would be part five of a sermon series entitled "Preparing the Way." The other um, sites are actually seeing the same thing, kind of that you're seeing today. Uh, we actually recorded last night and we're broadcasting it there. It's not something that we normally do, but this news we really wanted to get out. Sometimes when, when, you're, when you're trying to navigate a large ship and a large congregation, and there's a, we're a small church at Rockfish, but there's a lot of people who come, and we really think it's important to get the information out and adequately. And we're doing a lot here, and it's very tough to keep everybody in the loop sometimes. It's a, it's a constant yeah, struggle. Absolutely. But we've been talking about preparing the way, the path of repentance. Um, this is birthed out of the idea that uh, not only America, but the church needs a revival. We need an awakening. We need the power and the presence of God, not just in word, but in presence and in power. And I didn't make that up. That's something that's given to us in the Bible. It tells us that the kingdom of God is not just a bunch of talking, but the kingdom of God is one that is of power and should be evident and obvious in this world. We... Uh, we're going into a brand new area, a brand new era here at Rockfish Church. We're looking at going into to international church planting, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. Very excited, going to give you some details. But the idea behind this is the Great Commission. The Bible tells us very clearly, go into all the world, not some, not most, but all of the world, making disciples of every nation, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And he said, if you'll do this, I will be with you. Making disciples is absolutely key. That is God's plan for growing the church and ultimately growing the kingdom. Uh, Pastor Jeff is with me today. And again, we don't normally do the tandem teaching, but I absolutely, I absolutely love it. I Amen. love doing this. He's a, he's a he's a he's great to work with, especially in this capacity. And he's so smart. <laughs> um, I'm here to make him look pretty. Oh my lord! So anyway, so what's our scriptural basis? <laughs> yeah, so we just want to lay out some uh, scriptural foundation for you. This is at Revelation chapter seven, and we're going to kind of bookend this, if you will. Revelation 7, 9 says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. There's a, there's a lot of nuggets right in there. But what I want to really focus in on uh, is there are people around the throne of God from every tongue, tribe, and nation. Now, that, that is key, and, and that's looking forward, right? But how do we get from where we're at now to the place where every tongue, tribe, and nation are around the throne of God? This and, is kind of like a, a time travel. Yes. It's kind of like a prophecy. See, we know that we actually, Jesus, get, and it's so cool, he gives us a snapshot into the future to know that we, or at least some generation, did their job. Right. right. Isn't that crazy? We're going to know they're going to be there. So he's saying, guys, the church is going to be mobilized, and every tongue, tribe, and nation will be reached and will be before the throne on that day. Incredible. Yes, so, and so, you know, we often talk about a second coming of Christ, but there are so many people groups out there, they've never heard about the first coming of Christ. Right. So it's something to keep in mind. And I love that we are an outreach church, that we are a, a great commission church. And so that's Revelation. Now, how do we get from here to there? And, and I, I believe one of the scriptures we can go to is found in Romans 10. Romans 10, verse 14, 15, that first part of verse 15. And it says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And I get this. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? That's good stuff. That's going to lay the foundation of what we're about to, to branch in here today. Because today, um, we're going to be going into more detail about something that we touched on during last month's REACH update, which is this right here, Rockfish Manila. Rockfish Manila, international planting. That's a good thing. That's, that's just, this is awesome. 
So uh, we, we really want people to be on the same sheet of music. So you'll know kind of what your role. We'll know what our role is. You'll know timelines. And so let's get into the nuts and bolts of that and ask those questions that we want everybody to be able to answer. Because people are going to come and they're going to be added to Rockfish Church. And, and we need to know that everybody here currently, again, is on the same sheet of music. So Jeff and Tanya... Pastor Jeff and Tanya are preparing to leave. What is your official launch leave date? All right, you guys ready? We have a departure date of July 12, 2022. And so pretty, pretty quick, right? Pretty quick. That, that's, that's soon. But one thing we, we need to stress is, although I won't be at this site, I will be at Rockfish Church. Manila. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Jeff, and, and we said this when we announced it initially, but we want to make this very clear. Pastor Jeff will still be on staff at Rockfish Church. In fact, I'm going to tell you what his title is going to be, what his organizational operational capacity is going to be. Um, so, so in that, you should understand how he's going to be supported. Right. As you said, I'm still on staff. So um, our, our cost of living is actually going to be generated from the work salary, and just the same as it is, except for we're transferring to a different country. And so um, we'll be converting it to pesos. Come on, somebody. Yes. <laughs> hopefully they'll go a lot further than our dollar O's are going oh, right now. We're, we're praying. <laughs> but we're praying. but that, when we go back and we look at the Scripture, and we really like doing things in a scriptural context, it's the idea that we believe that our responsibility as a local church is to send him with that intentionality. There are certain things that you have to worry about on the mission field that you don't have to worry about in, you know, when you're local. We don't want him to have to worry about the level of support that he'll be receiving. Um, so that's very Im important to me. So when we talk about you going to um, Manila, planning Rockfish Church Manila in the Philippines, the question comes up, where do you live? See, sometimes we have an idea of what this looks like. And because of a degree of separation, we begin to fill in the blanks with our minds. So where are you going to live at and what does that look like? All right. So, so here's the... The actual <laughs> answer, I kind of beat around the bush the, the last service. We have no idea where we're going to live. <laughs> we, have, we have no house. We have no car. Tent. Um, possibly. But really, it's a, it's a faith thing that the Lord has told us to go. Uh, we've got confirmation from Pastor Tony, the leadership of Rockfish Church, and, you know, we're, we're going to be obedient to that. We're just going to go and just believe that the, the Lord has a place for us. He has a vehicle for us. And we're just going to, you know, rest in that and just believe for, for doors to open. Uh, right now, uh, our landing place is going to be in a, a place called Rizal, which is right outside of Metro Manila. And, um, you know, the Lord has, has been so awesome in opening doors there. We just believe that... The ministry is going to be starting there, and we have more to uh, announce later on when it's official, but I'm super excited about the things that have happened so far. Yeah, guys, please understand that this was not, um, we're not sending him over there to be homeless. The leadership, when we met, <laughs> one, I'm so proud of our leadership because the leadership basically, when we shared this vision and said, okay, we believe the timing is right, let's pray about it, seek God on it, they said, whatever it takes. So if it means that they rent, we're going to rent as soon as he finds a place. If it means that we purchase and have property there, we're willing to do whatever it takes in order to make this happen. This is everything on Red 7. We're not setting this up to, to lose. We're not setting this up to fail. We want this to, in fact, succeed and succeed powerfully. So two more questions that we're going to, I'm going to tell you we're going to answer and we'll get back to. One is how can you get involved? How can we as a congregation, get involved with this. And the second one is, um, when will we be able to come for a missions trip? When, when are we going to begin to send local folks to the places that we're going to be discussing? And we're going to circle back around to that in just a moment. But you, you said you're going to be based out of Rizal. And I think you have a map yeah. to give us an idea of what that looks like. And this is, I know that's a big yellow dot right there. <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> Metro Manila consists of uh, many cities actually and then Rizal you'll actually never know when you've left Metro Manila into Rizal it just kind of runs into one another uh, even more so than uh, our comparison our best comparison would be something like uh, Fayetteville Hope Mills but even that's 
you can tell when you enter Hope Mills, you know what I mean? So um, here is, is I don't, I've never been to New York, but you know, if there's suburbs of New York, it's, it's basically like that, I would but, imagine. So this is kind of like Manila would be considered the, the New York of the Philippines? Correct. So, so why Manila? Well, um, Manila is the international hub. It's the international airport. It's the, it's the gateway to the Philippines. And I've been calling it that for years now. Why? Because now, just some history about my family. We're from the northern part of the Philippines called Ilocos Norte. Now, we have churches uh, that I work with from the north all the way to the southern island of Mindanao. All flights are routed through Manila. When people want to leave their rural um, areas where they have dreams, aspirations, typically they're going to go to one of two places. There, there's a place called Cebu, which is very progressive right now. But the majority of people have their eyes set on that city of dreams, which is Manila. Yeah. And so, so, so the context of this is going to make a lot of sense in just in just a few minutes when you kind of see uh, the the bigger picture. So, when we talk about build or planting a rockfish church or looking at a rockfish church plant, there's certain things that we have to do that is contextually different based on the culture. That'll be obvious. But some of the aspects that will not change and that are incredibly important, some of the foundational principles are the same that we have here. Rockfish Church Manila will exist to make equip and release fully committed followers of Jesus. That's a functional definition of what we refer to as disciple. So when I say to you, are you a disciple? That means, are you a fully committed follower of Jesus? Nothing off the table. You're not, your life is not yours. That's, that's God's definition, not mine. And are you engaged in discipleship making? So, so when you go over there, you're carrying a vision. You're, you're carrying a mission. You're carrying a mandate. You have support, but it's essentially you're starting from scratch. Absolutely. Uh, we're starting from scratch. However, th this, is, this is how awesome God is. Mm. We have announced to the staff here, we, we leaked it out during the reach, but somehow, some way, I've had about 10 families from the Philippines reach out to me asking me when we're launching because they want to be a part. Ten families. You realize this organization started with seven. So God is really going before already, already preparing some things. That, that's huge. Yeah. So, so you're going to start with a core of, of leaders, hopefully. Um, so, so what are, can you give us just a slight example of what a cultural difference between there and here might be? Um, so culturally speaking, uh, it's, a, it's a place of, of honor um, it's a place of, um, they put high value on education. And uh, again, it's an honoring culture. We would address even our older brother by a, a name. Uh, say their name was Bob. We would call them Kuya Bob. It's just a, a respect. And um, so we, we honor upward. And, um, and so with that, comes responsibility. I think we're going to get into that here in a second. But it's a education is, is such a high priority to the, the, the Filipino culture. And in what we see is responsibility for the, the eldest child taking care of the rest of the, the family, even at the expense of their own comfort. Mm. They'll, they'll go abroad and, and, and work and send money back home in, in order to educate their siblings, in, in order to take care of their, uh, their mom and dad, and even their extended family. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just, in just a few minutes. What was it, maybe, maybe three years ago or more, I picked up the phone, and I've known Pastor Jeff. I, I love him. I love Tanya. I love his family. I've known Skyler. I remember the first time I grabbed him and picked oh him up and lifted him up. Oh, he lost his mind. He said, don't pick him up. Anyway, he started screaming. I don't know if you remember that, Skyler. I think he's emotionally scarred from that event. Anyway, I've known, I've known him for a long time, and I guess it was maybe three years ago. I called Pastor Jeff up, and I said, hey, man. I said, I want to run something by you. I said, I really I need you to tell me if I'm crazy. I said, I've got something in my heart that I feel like God is saying 
that he wants us to have a, a plant or a partner in every state in the United States and a plant partner or presence in every nation on the face of this earth. And I was like, man, do you remember the conversation? I do. And I was like, tell me, just, just tell me, am I crazy? Here's something I'm going to let you in a little kind of the way I do things and the way I make decisions as a leader. If I can see it, in other words, if I can get my head and my heart around it and, and I can really understand it, I call that vision. Um, and it just made sense to me, but sometimes you have to kind of, you kind of have to check yourself. And so I called him and I, I asked that question. You remember your response? I, I do. And I, I told him, are you crazy? No, brother. It sounds like you have big faith. Big faith. And I think we're all called to have big faith. And this is an incredible leap of faith because we still have that vision. And we're making inroads into that. Again, making church plants locally, reaching out for partners nationally, and then this international church plant. We want to have a presence in every country. This is a huge step forward. So there's two aspects that I want to say formally. Jeff will be operating, number one, as the lead pastor of Rockfish Church Manila, just so that you kind of understand his role. We were meeting and we were talking about the allocation of resources recently and some other things and how it would work. And I said, Jeff, I just I need to release you to be me there to be that, that, that person of senior leadership. We trust you. The leadership has empowered you. We've given you money. Don't spend more than you have, please, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, I will not spend more than the text. Yeah. <laughs> Can we put a cap on that credit card? <laughs> anyway, and this next part is, is, I'll just tell you what excites me. This I, I get goosebumps just, just saying this. He will also be the director of the mm. Southeast Asia Missions and Church Planting. Amen. So we're not just talking about planting a church. We're talking about planting something much different or much more. What, can, Absolutely. can you talk to us? Well, you know, when we returned from the Philippines in March, um, we felt like the Lord was dealing with us while we were there. I told Tanya, I said, we're not going to make an emotional decision. We're going to wait till we come back here. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to seek the peace of God. And, and then I'm going to go get confirmation from, from our spiritual authority. So I went to Pastor Tony, went to the elders, shared what the Lord was speaking to us, what we felt he was speaking to us, and, and they confirmed it. And, you know, we started remembering that early conversation, the vision that the Lord dropped down on Pastor Tony about a church plant or, or a church partnership or some type of presence in every state and then in every country of the world. And, and then we just both stopped and was like, wow. This fits the vision for Rockfish Church. And so uh, we, we both started getting excited. And here's the thing. Many years ago, we had a false start. 2008, I went and I got my dual citizenship. We were ready to launch in 2008. Um, the Lord wasn't into it. And um, although some great things happened from, from that endeavor, we, we didn't... We didn't go to the Philippines. We ended up at Anderson Creek for 11 years. Praise the Lord. So, so let, let me say this, and, and somebody needs to hear this. Somebody here, I believe right now, either watching online or, or present, that needs to hear what I'm about to say. Sometimes you get a vision, and you wonder if this is really from God. A lot of, very often, God will give us the vision, but he doesn't give us the timing. Yeah. What does that do? It activates that element of faith that we're called to operate in. Because just because you don't see the results or the fruit of something immediately, you've got to understand, it wasn't that I missed God. I've questioned that. I'm sure you were probably questioning that I messed stuff up with right. this false start. But God doesn't just work on a level. He works on many levels. And we yeah. have to understand that he's always working whether we see it or not. So if there's something that God has given you, a vision or something in your heart, listen, trust God for the timing. There's a word that I, I like to use. While you're waiting Occupy. Absolutely. Occupy. That's Take that word. territory that you're in and occupy it. Occupy it faithfully. So you have you actually have a list of countries yes. that we are intending to reach. These are target countries. This is again, this is what's so exciting. We're not just talking about building Rockfish Church Manila. We're talking about building a rockfish hub similar to what we have here. One that that works with other local churches to establish them and help them. So that's something that we've done and want to do more and we're going to continue to do is to reach out to other local churches. Listen, if the church is doing and fulfilling the mission that God has given, it doesn't matter where they're meeting. 
We are on the same team. If a church is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's incredibly important. This hub is going to allow him to do in Manila what we're doing here in the Fedville rayford area, which is reaching out to other churches, offering opportunity and resources for those, upper, for those churches to do everything God's called them to do. This is not about... Um, in, this, this is not about empire building. This is kingdom building. Amen. And, and Jeff is a kingdom man like myself. We're about the kingdom. How do we advance that kingdom? We are all on the same team. So this hub. <laughs> Can I say this, brother? Because I went to Pastor Tony and I said, I said, brother, you know, I, I work with, you know, Dove International. And I said, hey, anything will play out? He goes, man, let's just do it. Let's just work for the glory of God. Like, I love you. I, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that we're not supposed to do how we're doing it. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, and I was talking to Jeff. I said, we're probably doing all kinds of stuff wrong, you know, but that's okay. Nobody's told us not to, number one. I didn't say illegal. Uh, we're just doing it in unconventional ways. There you know you why? Because we're working with what we've got, and we're trusting God to take us there. And if he's not in it, it's not going to work. But if he's in it and he's for us, come on, it's destined yeah. to succeed, yeah. right? Yeah. Man, so, so nobody's told us not to. God has told us to, so we're just going to move on. But yeah. this list of countries here, check, man, check I, this out. I'm blown away. Yeah, now, now this map right here, I mean, this is a dream map right here, actually. I'm going to give you 10 countries that are just even in closer proximity where we're going to reach. Now, that includes um, the Philippines and Guam. And Guam's not a country, it's a U.S. territory. But, but check this list out right here. Th these are... This is a very doable, reachable list of countries right here. That's nine additional countries with the Philippines because there's like 200 and some countries out there, and we're going to have a presence in all of those countries. So but, we've got a lot of work to do, but, but this imagine, is a huge swath. Looking back at that map right there, though, I don't have Korea on there. I don't have India, Nepal. Repent. I know. I know. <laughs> well, I we mean, don't want to kill him. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, but but look at this. Look at a few of them. Cambodia. Do you understand? Cambodia is is. It's not just volatile when it comes to Christianity. I mean, it is a it is a communist nation. The amount of Christian martyrs in in the research that I've done concerning uh, Cambodia is incredible. The people represented just in these in these ten areas. Do you realize that the population of the Philippines, which is, you know, it's a lot of fragmented islands, over 103 million folks in Manila City alone, and this is proper, mm -hmm. um, what, what did I say, 1.8 1. 1. 1. million people right there crammed into that metropolis. And we are going to be right there in the mix of that. That's incredible. It is. One more thing. He said it earlier. He alluded to it. And this is, this is the sovereignty of God. He looks at that first trip and he goes, you know what? That was a, it was a, it was a false start. <laughs> no, it was the solidification of his dual citizenship. Now, what That's does that right. mean? It means that this wouldn't be happening today because he wouldn't be able to own property. We, wouldn't be, we would only be relegated to renting. We would be limited in the ability that God has. God is working well into the future when you don't even realize it. Now, what does dual citizenship mean for him? It means that here we look and we see a Filipino. There they look and they see... An American. A very tall American. He is, he is LeBron Hoagland in the Come Philippines. On. Come on. Yeah, in America, he's vertically challenged. But over there, he's a man among men. Mm. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Got to <laughs> buy me some sneakers. Yeah, and some high heel tennis shoes. All right. <laughs> anyway, awesome the potential here. This is, and I'll just tell you, man, this is humbling. I mean, I, I just, when I, when I think about it, I think this is not just a pipe dream. This is a reality of, of being a part of every tribe and tongue and nation that will stand. Do you realize that is an ordained time? There's a particular time in history that this, this vision that we saw of all these people before the throne is going to happen and we have an opportunity to yeah. play it. And, you know, going back to that, you know, I remember having a conversation with you, letting you know that at, at some point, it, well, I, I phrased it like this. For Tani and I, we never thought it was a question of if we would be in the Philippines. The question has always been when we would be in the Philippines. We just didn't know when or how we would get there, you know, um, if we were going to be self-funded or, you know, how the Lord would, would make it happen. And here it is. It's just unfolding. When we stopped trying to figure it out, that's when the Lord moved on our behalf. Amen. 
Right, we're better together. I, I want to warn you, please, don't kick down those doors. When you have that vision, cultivate it, pray over it, nurture it, but don't kick down doors. You won't like what's on the other side. I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it. Please, we don't have time to mess around and continue to mess up. So there are some aspects of the Philippines and its culture and its activities um, that, that really, really just tailor make it to making, equipping, and releasing. Can you talk to us about those? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, l let me just uh, throw a question out there to you, those of you who have not been in uh, any of the other services. Um, does anyone know what the biggest export of the Philippines is? No? Rice? Sugarcane? Those are small. Pineapples. Yeah. People. The answer is people. Human if, resources. Yeah. Have you ever been on a cruise? I just spoke to a brother out, out in the foyer. He says, because uh, I, I joked about this the, the other service, I said, have you ever been on a cruise? You've met a majority of my cousins. <laughs> can, 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 let, let, me, let me just interject this. In fact, we were on a cruise. We used to cruise before COVID hit and shut down everything. But anyway, we were on a cruise, and I remember having a, a conversation with a young Filipino lady who was on the cruise, and she was telling me about the church they had on the ship See? beneath beneath the deck, and they met every week. And she yeah. was talking about the worship team that they had. She somehow found out I was a pastor. Somebody might have been talking to her about Jesus. But anyway, she found out that I was a pastor. She's like, this is what's happening. So it's so ironic. I come back and told, I think I told you about that or shared, yeah. you with, shared that with you, and that's when he began to share this with me. I had no idea. This is a real thing. Yeah. So we have a term for, for those folks who leave the Philippines and uh, work abroad, and that is OFWs, um, Overseas Foreign Workers. And th they go in a variety of, to a variety of different countries doing a variety of different um, jobs. However, you know, when, when we look at, you know, exporting people, um, it, it triggers something else in my mind. You know, we're... We're to make, equip, release. They have this going on already where there's overseas foreign workers going abroad, starting churches in cruise ships. What if we were able to connect with the recruiting agencies within the Philippines before they left the Philippines mm. and we were able to share the gospel with them and then also sow the seed that they are not only going to work abroad as domestic helpers or teachers or nurses or IT professionals, but they're going to go abroad as missionaries cleverly disguised as teachers, as nurses, as IT professionals, domestic helpers. How much of an impact could we make by sending those folks out? So it's no longer just about us and a a, a single church. It's about us saturating and sending people all around the globe. So, so they, we are planting in a culture that is make, equip, release. Now, it's a little different. They don't understand the mechanism. It's like we say about the United States military here. The uh, military is the biggest mission-sending organization in the world because you come here, you get equipped, and when you go wherever you go, you represent Jesus. Same thing there. This is a this is a countrywide culture that's already there that we can take and tweak and utilize for the advancement of the gospel. Because when I look at the map that you have of overseas workers around the world, the, another list of potential countries is unveiled here. Yeah. And the, this is significant because many of these countries that the majority of these, of these overseas foreign workers uh, work in are what kind of countries? They're closed countries. Now, one of the highest populations of uh, Filipino overseas workers is found in Saudi Arabia. So I think that the top three, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, um, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates. Think about that, guys. We may never have an opportunity to, to go there and plant a church. They do. The doors are open for them. This is something that I'll just tell you, I've been racking my brain over. How do we get into these closed countries successfully? creating underground church networks? How do we get into North Korea? How do we get into the hermit kingdom? I mean, these are real questions and real problems that we have to overcome, and I believe that we can, we can do with God's help. If you think about, remember when ISIS was just going through, just destroying and killing people, there was, I remember watching the news and seeing that many of those people 
who were martyred by ISIS in some of these countries that we're talking about right here. Um, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Australia, Oman, United uh, Kingdom. A lot of those countries where all of the chaos was going on, a lot of the martyrs were Filipinos. It's, yeah. it's just interesting. But that's another whole list of, of potential reach. Yeah. And you know, in, in their minds, in their hearts, because of the relationship between uh, the USA and, and the Philippines, many of them would love to come to the, Philippines, uh, to the United States. However, uh, getting a visa to, to come over here and work is, is next to impossible. I believe it's something like 95, 96% of the people uh, don't make it past the interview process at the U.S. consulate in Manila. And so what they view as a negative, we can actually spin that, turn it around, and use it for the glory of God. Because, because of the, the denial of a U.S. visa, they're having to go to different places. Man, I understand they would, they would love to come here. But man, they have an opportunity. It's just, just a shift in mindset. They have an opportunity to go to places where we probably would never be able to go. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Now, anytime you're trying to fulfill a, per, a, a particular mission or mandate from God, inevitably there's con connectivity that has to happen. When we say we're better together, guys, this is not just a cliche. It means that we're going to need organizational interconnectivity. Even here, you know, we really, again, try to reach out and help other churches with our resources and create a network, and we're trying to do one locally, nationally, and internationally. But there are sometimes that strategic partners. He'll have to work with government agencies and entities. He'll be able to get his foot in the door with probably local police and a lot of other stuff. So we're going to approach this very intentionally and strategically. But there are strategic partners. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, those of you who may have followed us along our journey uh, in February, March, you may have seen us uh, talking to what we call Dove Pastors. The reason we're, we're with them and talking to them is because about 12 years ago, my fathers in the faith, Ron Meyer, Larry Kreider from Dove International Ministries, asked me if I would provide what they call apostolic oversight to some of the churches in the Philippines. And that network has grown now to about 21 churches. Mm. And, and so that's, that's, that's what I do on behalf of Dove International. And I'm believing, I'm believing by faith that God is going to e expand that network and do some amazing things through Dove International. Why do we share that today? Is because I want everyone to, to have clarity as to what's going on. It's, it's never a, an either or, it's a yes and. Rockfish Church Manila, Dove International Philippines, and we're working together uh, for the glory of God to expand his kingdom. And that's what it's about. Now, um, Kids International Ministries, that is uh, just a, a wonderful ministry that we connected with over there. When you guys come to visit us, mm -hmm. you can... You can come and you're going to stay at Kids International. Why? Because we probably won't have the bedroom space for you. And, um, <laughs> and the, the second reason is they are set up to receive short-term missionaries. And so they, they have dormitories. Um, they have rooms for families. They have a, a dining hall. Um, they have built-in outreach. There's an orphanage across the street, a, a free medical clinic across the street where you can volunteer there's uh, elementary school all the way up to high school. If, if you're gifted uh, with, with teaching, you can do that. They have outreach uh, in the streets. Um, so it, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, if you want to get involved and you want to come visit, uh, Kids International is, is a strategic partner of ours. And so you'll see us posting you know, about the Rockfish Church plant. We're going to take you on that journey. Um, but you'll also see us... Uh, intertwining some stories about some of the Dove churches and, and some things that are happening with Kids International. I want to be really clear and just very open. Our cost of living is, is coming from Rockfish. However, there's that other side where we used to self-fund regarding the, the travel within country to check on the various churches from the north all the way to the south. And so there may be times where you'll see us pop on social media and, and you'll see a need. I'm not, I'm not addressing the Rockfish family, okay? You guys give to Rockfish. I'm actually putting it out there so our other 
uh, friends and family. If they see a need and they want to be a part of that, they, they can, okay? So just, just know my heart in that. Same with Kids International. There may be some heartfelt needs. Uh, I remember just a couple of days ago, I believe Tanya posted that there's a need uh, regarding some of the, the midwives that are there. They're, they're, doing it, uh, they're doing it for free because they're, they're domestic missionaries and they don't have any, any type of support. So they're, they're doing it just because they, 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 they love the Lord and they love people and they want to serve. Well, there's a need there. And so Tanya reposted that. And so uh, that's under Kids International again. But now what we're saying is, we're going to talk about how you can be involved in this. But when we post under Dove International or Kids International, guys, understand those are specific needs for, for those ministries, and that's separate from Rockfish Church, although we're all in partnership together. I'm just trying to, we're, we don't want to commingle funds. Let, let's take one step back and give you the why behind the what. We are what's called a non denominational church. Now, there's certain that gives us great latitude in a lot of ways, but it also it also takes away the some aspects of, of corporate resources. So some things we have to build from the ground up, and we're not afraid to do that. If God sends the right people and we have the resources, we will stink and build it, no problem. But there are certain times when we have to say, okay, why do we need to recreate the wheel? Is there a viable um, the relationship that we can have out there that, that, and just plug into and, and share those resources. These are two of those that make that possible and they, it works well within the confines of our vision. Again, we are on the same team. Absolutely. We, we are growing um, and we do have resources. Thank you, Jesus. But again, yeah. we don't have to... And, and the human everyone resources. is so kingdom-minded. I believe it's going to be a beautiful partnership and y'all come on and visit and you can see it in action well that brings us to our two questions there we go one how can we get involved um, if you are contributing to Rockfish Church right now, you are already involved. Again, we are not only giving him living expenses, we are not only um, supporting in the acquisition of buildings and all that good stuff, we're also giving him an outreach budget that allows him to not just live, but to extend. Now, at some point, the church over there, our hopes are that it will grow, and as it grows, right. he brings on staff, and, and we're just trying to really help fast-track this fertilization process of, of, the, of the young church. So you are involved. What we're going to have on our website is under our reach on the website, which is reaching the world for Jesus. We're going to have areas of the local, um, national, and international that you can kind of click on and get more information. The Rockfish Church Manila will be one of those churches. You'll be able to click on that, and it will take you to an autonomous website. Now, when I say that, we're talking about the Internet. It's not a .com. It's not in the United States. We're talking about international things here. So it'll take you to a website that, that Jeff is going to maintain and keep, and you can get much more information there. But just know, if you are contributing to Rockfish Church or contributing to the outreach of Rockfish Church, it is being dispersed not only in Manila, but it will be dispersed um, nation nationwide, uh, statewide, locally, and locally all over the world accordingly. So we try to have those needs and just trust us to send us where the greatest need is, is kind of our heart there. Amen. So when will we be able to go for sure? Let me just ask a question here before we answer this. How many in here would say, you know what, I am interested and I feel like at some point God has spoke to me and said there may be an opportunity for being involved in mission work. Anybody in here? Good. Don't be, oh, wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take pictures. Praise 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. None wow. of my family. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, I no, noticed no, none no, of his family no. raised their hands. So, guys, that's huge. So a, a, a quarter of you feel as if you would be open. So we are going to have those short-term and maybe long-term missions. Maybe, maybe the person who will be building the next hub in Europe or, or, or in, in South America, or maybe you're in here. And, and again, this is, this is the vision that God has given us. Mm. So, Jeff, when? When, when? when can we get our... Somebody said to me in between services, they said this. Right now we have a, uh, we have a membership application. And when you complete <laughs> starting point, you get a volunteer application the same day. We said, well, maybe we need to enter passport applications in the packet. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Amen. Either we're going to do this or we're not going to do this. Either God has called us to reach the world or we can sit on our laurels and not do it. I believe the Great Commission 
will remain unfulfilled until it becomes a corporate conviction, and that's what we're talking Amen. about. So, so when can we come? And you know, it's a, it's not an either or. It's it's a yes and both. Amen. Right? We don't neglect our backyard. We do everything we can wherever God opens up a door. So the question was, when will be when will we be able to to come for short term missions? Well, here's the deal. We're going to be leaving July 12th. We, uh, we land there in July 13th. So, guys, whenever you want to come, you just come. You, you can form a team. You can come individually. You can come as a family. Um, nothing is off the table. Here's what I need to share with you right now. The Philippines just came out of a, a very strict lockdown period. So for two and a half years... Um, up until March 1st, while we were there, it was very strict. A ages 16 and below could not leave their house. Ages 65 and above, they could not leave their house. Um, the rest of them, they could only leave one person at a time unless they were a frontline worker. Well, now they, they brought that down to the point where the country is open. They are able to receive tourists, short-term missionaries. However, if you're unvaccinated, there is a quarantine period, and that quarantine period is 14 days. If you're vaccinated, there's no more quarantine period. And so those are some things to keep in mind. Also, I want to say this. We are going at, the, at probably the worst possible time weather-wise. We're going in the middle of monsoon season. But he's tall, so he won't drown. Come on, somebody. I, I'm like a lifeguard. Come on. <laughs> Pray if I could swim. Um, I, I do float. <laughs> so what I would say to you is you can come anytime you want, but if you want to be hmm, somewhat less hot, there we go. I would consider coming sometime between December and February. Th those are great times. But I understand, of course, that if you're taking your family, you know, summer vacation is here, and you're always welcome. So, so know that. You're welcome to come anytime. So the infrastructure will be available pretty much immediately. Uh, Jeff, Pastor Jeff leaving is going to leave a space. We will, we will be replacing him with a, another local director of outreach. That director or coordinator of outreach will be the contact person to work with Jeff and set up those trips or help you kind of set up those trips and, and, and make that happen. So be patient. These are some pretty big shoes that we've got to, uh, got to fill. He has been an incredible blessing. He and his family has been an incredible blessing to, to me personally and to Rockfish Church as, as an organization, as, a, as an entity, as a local, a local body. So um, a couple things. We, were, we are going to lay hands on them and send them the last weekend of June. Right. So it's June 26th. Please be here for that. There's going to be some other pastors and people who absolutely love him and his family who are going to attend those services with us. So we're going to, we're going to do that. And we're going to be doing some other things that are monumental and are, are, are really going to be exciting within the local church here and, and what's happening at Rockfish Rayford and, and, and Aberdeen and Anderson Creek. So yeah. anyway, thank you so much, Jeff. Will you pray us out? Any, any closing thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Can I just share this? Guys, I celebrated two years here at Rockfish Church in this month, actually. And this has been uh, such a wonderful experience. And, and I got to say this. I feel like I'm just now getting my groove here, you yeah. know. And this is not an easy thing for us. It's, um, it's always been on our heart, but it's not an easy thing. And um, being here, working with the leadership, the staff, uh, falling in love with, with all of you guys, um, it, it makes it difficult to leave. However, I want, want you to just keep this in mind. You'll still see this bald-headed Filipino uh, <laughs> once a month on the, on the big screen up here. And we're always going to be connected. Uh, I'm an email away. I'm a message away. I'm a Facebook chat away. And we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm going to be looking for you guys in the Philippines. Come on, somebody. And we'll be back to visit a couple Amen. times a year. Make, equip, release. release. We're going to make, 
disciples who make disciples according to God's mandate. Pray us out, my brother. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we get to be a part of what you're doing here on this earth. Lord, we don't take the Great Commission lightly. Lord, you saw all the hands of those people that just said they, they want to go. They're ready to go. And they're saying, here I am, Lord, send me. And so, Father, I, I pray that you continue to speak to their heart of hearts, Lord. And um, give them the timing. Give them the, giving, give them the, the place that you're sending them. So, God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, again, for, for your timing, for opening up doors that, you know, we, we, we've tried to enter before. And, God, we just feel your presence in this. We feel your peace in all of this. And so, God, we, we thank you for your love for us. And God, I pray right now for my brothers and sisters in here today that they would have an understanding that they are missionaries, cleverly disguised as military personnel, <laughs> as teachers, as factory workers, all sorts of different um, occupations, Lord. May we serve you with all of our hearts. And God, we thank you again for your love for us, for using us as laborers in this end time harvest. And so God, we give you all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.